What's going on everybody? If you're seeing this page, that means the official Torn Your Rain Reloaded merch store is now available. To get access to the store, make sure you go ahead and click the store tab on my YouTube channel. From there, you will be able to see all the merch that is available. We have mugs, shirts, hoodies, joggers, and so much more to come. All original designs made by yours truly, Torn Your Rain Reloaded. Now go ahead and get your merch today and you can feel nothing in style. Now y'all saw I just recently did a video talking about how illegal immigration is going to be bad for black people. I basically was called exposing the dark side of illegal immigration and how it affects black Americans. I wish I had this story in my back pocket when I did that initial video, but that's fine because I have a hold of it now to talk about this story and how it's going to this how something like this could affect black people as well. So you see on your screen two people on the left you see 11 year old little girl whose name is maria gonzalez and on the right you see a man by the name of juan carlos garcia rodriguez and he's 18 years old and he is a migrant from guatemala and this man deleted or unalived however you want to put it this 11 year old girl and then blamed it reportedly blamed it on two black men when i first heard about this i immediately thought of susan smith we all know the story of susan smith as a matter of fact i recently did a lot about a month ago a triple p on her when it said that her family don't even want her out of jail because her parole is coming up and they said no keep her there they pretty much have distanced themselves from her for what in the crime in which she committed of course we know she ended up killing her children and then blamed it on a black man or black men much like what this guy did right here now again that goes back to what i was saying about how you have people who are in these who are coming over here illegally and they're committing all these acts of criminality and how we get lumped into it whenever they do the black and brown thing or the people of color thing here you have this dude right here only 18 years old not 28 not 38 not 48 so on and so forth 18 he's just now entering what will be considered adulthood and already he's committed a crime on here that should get him the death penalty if you if you quite honestly ask me how i would choose to punish him not only for the main crime of him deleting and unaliving this little girl but the fact that he blamed it on not one but two black men for the crime I always said that if black people had a hate crime bill in the books, that right there would be seen as a hate crime when you falsely accuse black people of committing these crimes and you know they didn't do it. And who knows what that could lead to because they could have went out and said, okay, we'll just go out and see and try to see who we can find uh, who did this. It could have just been anybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this article coming from the Atlanta Black Star and see what other news or information they have as it pertains to the story. An 18-year-old Guatemalan migrant could face capital punishment if found guilty of the death of his 11-year-old next-door neighbor. And we all know capital punishment is basically the death penalty. Authorities believe the Pasadena, Texas preteen was sexually assaulted and strangled by the neighbor, whom police say tried to deflect blame from himself by using a familiar racial trope of saying it was two black guys. Police say to hide the child's body, the youth whose name is Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez entered the country illegally in January, stuffed it in a hamper, and hid, un hid it underneath her, her father's bed. So this guy literally just got over here in January illegally. Not even for a whole year. And what, look at what he did. Again, going back to what I talk, told y'all about in the other video. A lot of them haven't even been here for a whole year. And they immediately bring their level of criminality over here. Like I said, this is the dark side of illegal immigration. Is bringing over the criminality element with them that they were committing at home in their homeland. And they're bringing it over here. Texas law enforcement arrested and charged Garcia Rodriguez with the August 12th death of Maria Gonzalez. He was hit with one count of capital murder of a person older than 10 and younger than 15. In Texas, this crime is punishable by life imprisonment or the death penalty. Now booked as an adult, Garcia Rodriguez is being held in custody at the Harris County Jail. He appeared in court for the first time on August 24th and bond was denied. 
The young victim was killed at her home in the main village apartment. An investigation determined that the refugee had just turned 18 and moved into the complex weeks before taking her life, law and crime reported. After the girl was found dead, Garcia Rodriguez fled to Louisiana where he was later captured. After his arrest, Garcia Rodriguez initially denied harming Gonzalez. Fox 26 reports he told police that he was friends with friends during the time Maria had been killed. However, that alibi did not check out. Later, he told authorities that two black men forced him to commit the attack, adding that they had guns and threatened to kill him if he didn't. Now, see, that's the thing right there. He immediately went to the thing of, oh, it was two black guys that made me do it. Now, remember, remember the first story he gave was he was out with friends. That was the first story he gave. But since that one didn't work, he went with another one and said, oh, it was two black guys that forced him to commit this crime. Notice it wasn't two people from his community that forced him to commit this crime or two white people that forced him to commit this crime or anybody else. Again, it goes back to the default. It was two black guys that did it. And notice they always use the number two. They always use two. It's never one. It's always two. And again, it's always trying to add into that trope of black men are some of the biggest criminals in the establishment it's always that no matter what it's like he literally had to come up with something on the fly to make it stick and try to make it be consistent well it wasn't consistent let's be real here we, they i think they knew he was lying they knew right off the bat that this dude was lying but the fact is that's who he immediately went to first don't come to me with this black and brown coalition this poc nonsense when you have this element that is floating around in the establishment right now as it stands it's it's not working is is really not they are they have become literally some of our biggest enemies we have a, quite a few of them but they are literally inching their way near the top of course we all know who's not going to be dethroned we know that for a fact but between that asian american community and now them there well those two are competing for the second and third spot sometimes they can interchange depending on the week but right now as you can see this they, they're up there that is not a good thing when i tell people we got to keep people on the radar this person i'm talking about in this video the killer is a perfect example of that not only because he brutally murdered this little girl but the fact that he defaulted to blaming it on two black men forcing him to commit this crime that actually makes no sense he this guy probably doesn't even know one black person but hey it was two black guys that made him do it okay okay you know let's continue court documents show that on the day of the murder gonzalez's father saw the long-haired neighbor talking on the phone in a stairwell of the complex before he left for work gonzalez's lived in unit 204 and garcia rodriguez lived in unit 203 the apartments were six feet apart from each other and shared a stairwell maria messaged her father on the whatsapp messaging app around 10 2 a.m and said someone was knocking on the door the dad sent someone to the house to check on the child but did not receive a report of concern however when he arrived home at around 2 30 p.m he discovered his daughter had been mushed in a black trash bag and dumped in a white laundry basket in his bedroom that has to be something very devastating i'm sure for any father or any parent for that matter to have to come home and see that your child's lifeless body is in your home like literally right there and this guy literally stuffed her in a in a trash bag and, and then in a in a um in a trash bag and then dumped her in a, in a laundry basket that's not something that anybody wants to come home and see especially since it's like okay i left home this morning and i saw you and you were breathing and i come home and you've been brutally murdered like that's not something anybody would want to see and i wouldn't blame the father if he wanted to put hands on this dude before he finally goes behind that wall police said her cause of death was determined to be blunt force head and neck trauma and asphyxia due to strangulation court documents also said maria had been sexually assaulted during the attack the dad also discovered on the floor a strange silver key one eventually linked to garcia rodriguez and shared it as evidence to authorities he said the key did not belong to anyone in their home when officers asked around the complex garcia rodriguez's roommates said the suspect was supposed to be moving out but had refused to return the key to those living in the apartment as a result the roommates changed the locks on him 
Rome, one roommate said Garcia Rodriguez stated he had gotten a new job and was moving out and refused to return his apartment key. So it seems to me that this killer has had issues even with his own roommates, which is scary for his roommates because seeing what he did to the neighbor, the neighbor's daughter, who knows what he could have done to them. So this guy, like I said, he, he who knows what he was doing over in Guatemala before he got over there again. He just turned 18. He just turned 18. And and look at what he and look at the crime in which he committed. The key found at Gonzalez's residence matched the old lock for the 203 unit. The key, even before DNA evidence was gathered, helped authorities pin down the Guatemalan as a suspect. Gonzalez is devastated by the loss of his daughter. He said in a statement he hopes the suspect is burdened with the full weight of the law for what he has done to my daughter. And I'm almost certain that the father probably has some more stuff that he wants to say and most likely do to this individual, which I would not fault him at all for feeling that way and feeling to do whatever he felt needed to be done before this guy even got to a courtroom. But that is sick. Like I said, it's sick that this guy did what he did. And it wasn't enough, like I said, for him to just take this little girl out who did absolutely nothing to him. And sometimes, you know, like in some instances, I would like to know what was the motive for him to actually commit this level of criminality? Like, what did this girl do to you? And I'm saying it right now. She mostly couldn't have done anything. This guy just, in my opinion, just had a lust to kill. And that's exactly what he felt like doing. Or did he do it because he not only had a lust to take someone out, but also because he wanted to blame, play the game of blame a black man or blame black men in this case? Because, again, he didn't blame anybody else for this. He went and defaulted to the same old trick bag. Let's just go ahead and put this on black men. And notice he didn't say that black men committed the crime of doing this. He said that they forced them to do it. And if he didn't do it, they would delete him. So it wasn't, oh, they did it. And, you know, it wasn't me. It was they made me do it. And if I didn't do it, then they would have took me out. Like the story doesn't even make any sense. And I would also like to know what the demographics for this area in which they lived in, because it doesn't sound to me like they probably lived around a lot of black people And the story. Just didn't make any sense. Like, why would two random black men tell you to take out your neighbor's daughter? It doesn't compute at all. Like it, it really doesn't make any sense. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that this dude was clearly lying. And I'm glad they figured that out early on. And then he had more than one story. Like the first story didn't make sense. So he came up with this other one that was even worse than the first story that he gave. He gave up two lies and I'm glad they picked him up way before then. Then when you hear the stories about his roommates, you know, and how they had to deal with him, it sounds like this guy was just a straight up scumbag. Anyway, that just turned into a scumbag who happened to be a murderer at the same time, who happened to commit the act of murder as well as other things. But yeah, again, going back to the video that I did recently about how it's going to affect us. Here you have this guy right here, you know, doing what he did. And who did he blame? It wasn't again. It wasn't someone who identifies as him or identifies as brown he went and defaulted again to black men to black men for doing this that's why i said do not come to me with the black and brown thing do not come to me with the people of color or the poc thing it does not work it has never worked and the more and more people keep feeding into that then you're going to have stuff like this happen and then they the more and more they're going to try to lump us in with each other i don't want to be associated with that we got our own issue we got to deal with and now we got to like fight this off at the same time it's a lot it is way too much it's a heavy load to carry and it's a heavy burden to bear and i'm going to close out with this if it wasn't for that key that they found this man most likely would have gotten away with it that's the scary part that key that discovery of that key is what led to his capture or led them to knowing or finding out that it was indeed him his story who knows probably would have stuck if they did not get that key so thanks to him uh his clumsy his clumsiness 
that he gave himself away with that that's and that's the crazy part about it it's the it usually comes down to the clumsiness of the person who makes these kind of who does this kind of thing and then blames it on black people is usually falls down on their clumsiness or the falling apart of their story that gives them away if the person is a good enough liar to the point where they can make their story sound believable they can get a practically get away with it but yeah thankfully the key to the, the key that they were talking about in the article that silver key is what exposed him as the liar that he was